in this video i will let you know how to send the sensors data to the client connected with the esp web server through websocket server programming using the json syntax so let's get started so those who are new to my channel let me tell you that i am currently running a series of making our own local area network based home automation system from scratch using the esp32 and the node mcu board and during this journey we'll be learning about websocket server web server javascript html json and stuff like that so if you are interested in making your own local area network based home automation system or maybe if you are interested in any of the topic which i discussed just now make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out any of the episode that being said let us start with the fifth episode of this series so this is the code which i have written for the fifth episode which is for sending the sensors data to that you know client connected to the server now till the fourth episode we were able to successfully control the appliances connected to the esp board using a web page maybe on your smartphone or a laptop okay uh, we have used that websocket server programming and the json syntax for transferring the data now in this video i'll just let you know how to send the sensors data from the server to the client okay so if you have missed out any of the episode uh, then i will attach the link for all the episodes in the description of this video okay that being said let's start with the code for this fifth episode okay now here in this code i will only let you know the changes which i made as compared to the code which we used for the fourth episode okay so first of all i have declared one library called dht.h because in this video i'll be using the dht11 temperature and humidity sensor for sending the data to that client okay that's why i have uh, declared this dht library if you don't have that library you can just uh, download it by going to sketch into include library into manage libraries okay so you have to install uh, this library okay after that, you, all, you also need to install this Adafruit sensor library whose link is attached here, okay? So you have to download and install both the libraries in your Arduino ID. After that, I have used this Tickle library whose link is also mentioned here. So make sure you download and install these all libraries, okay? After that, I have uh, defined the DHT sensor pin as uh, 4. So I have connected the sensor digital pin 4 of ESP32 board. After that, I have just uh, used this much line of code, which is mandatory if you want to use the DHT sensor, okay? After that, uh, here is one, there is one function called send sensor, which I will discuss later on. And after that, I have used this ticker and defined one object called timer. Uh, this thing I will let you know uh, after, you know, completion of the HTML page. Okay. So let us jump onto the HTML page and let's see what changes I made as compared to the previous code. Uh, let me just copy this much line of uh, HTML page. I'll open the uh, sublime text editor and I will paste that code here. Okay. So this is the HTML page. Now, what are the changes here? Uh, let me tell you. First of all, I have used one new tag which is called the meter tag. Now, what is this meter tag all about? Let's just jump on to our favorite website to learn about this tag. And that website is nothing but this w3schools.com. Okay, so I'll search for this meter tag here. So here's the meter tag. So let's just click on this try it yourself uh, to just visualize about uh, uh, what is the use of this meter tag. Okay. So as you can see, the meter tag is used to define a meter, okay? So basically meter tag is used to uh, display a visual representation of the data. As you can see, there is a disk usage C and disk usage D and both of the usages are defined with a visual representation, okay? So that same meter tag I have used inside our code to uh, represent the data which we will be receiving from the sensor, okay? So one of the tag I have created is for temperature and one of the tag I have created is for humidity, okay? So the format of the text goes like, first of all, I have defined a H3, which is a heading tag, of course, and I have defined one heading called temperature, okay? After that, I have just closed this heading tag. After that, I have written as a meter, I have opened the meter tag, Inside the meter tag, I have a couple of uh, parameters or you can say attributes about that tag. Okay, so what are that, uh, that attributes? First of all, the value. So by default, the value of that meter tag is defined as two. Okay, then the minimum and maximum value. This is a range of that meter. Okay, so the range goes from zero to 100. And here I define one ID, which will be useful uh, when we need to assign the data to this particular meter. Okay, I will let you know in a while. Okay, but, but right now I have defined the ID of this uh, meter tag as temp underscore meter okay then after that i just close this meter tag here okay now if i write this much amount of code let's just delete all these things so let me just execute this much amount of code so i'll open that uh, google chrome and open that html file okay so as you can see we have one temperature heading and uh, in, uh, under that heading we have a meter tag displayed here okay so uh, first of all uh, i just missed out this line which is this division okay uh, this is kind of a css used just to make the alignment of the temperature in the center of that web page now the question arises that we we can use this center tag as well which we have used previously but no that won't work 
if you if you need to test what happens when you use this center tag then uh, i won't let you know here this will be your assignment or maybe your, your homework just uh, test out this center tag uh, inside this uh, temperature meter and see what results you get okay but uh, let me tell you this center tag won't work with this meter rather than you have to define this division tag inside which we have one attribute called style and inside the style we are just you know uh, centering everything okay so after that after that tag we have defined the temperature and the meter hence everything is inside the center okay and as we have defined the value 2 as you can see there's a little portion of the meter is green which is like 2 percent of that whole meter okay if i just change the value to maybe say 50 then the meter will be like half filled okay great so our tag is completely working now uh, what we need to do here is just a visual representation of that uh, meter tag but uh, what's the actual value like uh, by this by looking at this we can say yeah it is half filled so it may be 50 but what if it is one third or three fourth or anything so what's the exact value for that what i will do i'll define one more heading tag here okay so that was written here so here i've created one more heading tag which uh, with the font size of h3 here i define one more id whose id value whose id is temp underscore value this is again i will let you know uh, further in the code okay so just think about we have one heading tag whose attribute is id and one of the attribute is style which is also used just to you know display the data just after that meter tag okay so if i just remove unnecessary lines of code and uh, and just save this much line of code and if i refresh this page as you can see uh, i'm not only getting the visual representation of the meter but i'm also getting actual number just after that meter tag okay so if i just remove this style attribute you will see a visible difference i'll save it as you can see the number is displayed be behind oh sorry below this meter tag okay so let's just put that uh, css style back okay so this much line of code is used to uh, make a meter tag and just to display the value of that meter tag just you know after that meter okay similarly i've created one more meter tag for humidity so again humidity then meter values to 0 to 100 maximum values id is changed here the id is hum which stands for humidity underscore meter after that i have created one more heading and this id is given as humidity underscore value which will display the actual value of the humidity okay so if i save this much line of code and refresh this page as you can see i got two more a heading which says temperature humidity and both the temperature humidity has their separate meter tag okay to display the values okay so this is all about the visual representation part of html now we need to define the logic using which we will be fetching the data coming from the server and display that data here inside the meter tag okay for that we'll take the help of javascript so here as you can see first of all i have declared two variables named temperature data and humidity data whose initial value is assigned as zero cool after that here is one new function uh, which we haven't used in the previous episode which is connection dot on message okay so this function will be called whenever any new data is coming from the server side okay so as soon as we get any data that data is saved inside this event and we can you know fetch that data by using the dot representation so if i write event dot data i can get the full data received from the server side okay so i just saved that full data inside one new variable called full data and after that i'm just printing uh, that full data using the console.log function so this is basically a serial monitor which i have discussed previously so what this two line of code will do if any data is received from the server side it will save it inside this variable and it will simply display it on the console side cool nothing crazy in it after that let us, let's assume that the data coming from the server side is formatted with json okay we will be formatting the data in json and then we'll be sending to the client okay so uh, just think just imagine right now that data coming here is in the form of json so first of all we need to pass that json data for that i will use the function called json.pass this is a built-in function okay so json.pass inside that will provide our full data okay what this will do it will pass all the json data inside the variable called data now we can fetch any object using this data variable for example so here i'll be creating two uh, json objects so if i need if i need to uh, show you the data or representation then that data will be sent in this format like temperature then t then humidity and h okay so i want that subline tag so what i'm doing is i'm just fetching the temperature humidity data using the dot representation okay so if i write data dot temp temp is nothing but this uh, uh, first json object okay using this much uh, line of code 
we can get the temperature data which is t and that will be saved inside temp underscore data similarly i can get the data of that hum which is humidity uh, value by just writing data dot hum okay make sure the thing which you're writing here uh, must be matched with the json object okay it is case sensitive so make sure you write it very properly okay so by writing data dot hum or hum I can get the actual humidity value data which will send from the server to the client okay so this is how we have successfully saved the temperature data and humidity data in the separate variables now we are left with sending this data to the meter tag okay for that we need to learn one more uh, object or one more you know interesting thing in uh, html that is document dot get element by id okay so let us jump on to our favorite website which is w3schools.com here just uh, type uh, document dot get element by id okay okay so if i click on try it yourself so this is a very basic example which will uh, let you understand like what is the use of this document uh, document dot get element by id okay so first of all just think about the dot representation in the javascript and the html uh, it's just like going inside that function. For example, so here document represents the whole HTML page. So now here we have to go inside that HTML document. So we'll use the dot operation. Okay. So after dot operation, we are inside the HTML page. Now what we need to do, we need to get L. Uh, okay, sorry. We need to get element by ID. Okay. So here ID is one attribute. Okay. So what we are doing is uh, after writing dot uh, get element by id we need to define the id name so here the id name defined as demo now in this much line of code will search the whole html document with the id demo so as you can see here is the paragraph tag whose id is demo okay so we got the tag whose id is demo now what we need to do this is defined here so dot representation now with this dot representation we will go inside that paragraph tag okay so as you can see document inside it will search for the uh, tag whose id is demo we got that id demo we'll go inside that tag now what we need to do here it is written as inner html now inner html stands for everything which is written inside that tag okay as you can see the click the button to change the text this is the inner html now we are just changing that data to hello world okay so what this much line of code says as soon as the button is pressed my function will be called inside my function we are just changing that inner html of demo id with hello world so if i click on this try it button this much line of code should get changed to hello world let's just test it out great this is working so this is the use of document dot get element by id dot inner html okay so dot inner html is the one thing which we'll be using inside the code so let me just tell you so if you see is look at the second line of the code which is same which we have seen just now what we are doing is we have just written as document dot that means we are going inside the document get element by id temperature underscore value let us see which tag has this id so temperature underscore value it is the id of h3 okay cool what we have to do we are going inside the h3 tag so with this dot representation we are going inside the h3 tag after that i have written as inner html that means we have to change something inside that h3 tag okay so that means this so the value 2 will be changed now 2 will be replaced with what value that we have defined here as temperature data that means as soon as we get the temperature data this this much line of code will change this value 2 with the actual temperature data i hope the things are pretty clear okay so now there is one more thing which is dot value let's see what dot value represent okay so let's just look at this code line by line first of all document cool html document dot go inside the html document get element by id temperature underscore meter let's just see temperature underscore meter id so temperature underscore meter id is oh here okay so temperature underscore meter id is assigned to the meter tag okay cool now here it is written as dot means we have to go inside that meter tag then it is written as value now we are not changing the inner html now we will be changing the value of that tag okay so if i look at the values okay so the initial value is 2 okay so that initial value 2 will be replaced with the temperature data getting my point so as soon as we receive the temperature data this line of code will replace the value of the meter tag while the second line of code will replace the actual data represented uh, after that meter tag okay so this is the beauty of this document dot get element by id so we are just you know getting the data throwing that data to the html page according to their ids okay so this is the beauty or this is the most useful 
thing about the id in this html document okay similarly we are just sending the hum data to the hum meter and uh, hum data to the hum value okay this is same as we have discussed uh, before with the temperature value so this is all about the html page uh, just to send the census data to that you know client side okay so yeah this is all about the html page now let's see how we will be sending the data uh, collected by our esp board to the client formatted with json okay so let us start with the setup part of the code so as you can see i have written as dht dot begin this is the mandatory function to initialize the dht sensor okay after that i initialized as timer dot attach okay so let us discuss what timer is so as you can see here first of all we have declared the library called ticker and after that we have created an object called timer now here in this kind of code where there is a loop function running inside the void loop that may be a blink code or maybe this websocket server or any server code make sure you don't write anything inside that loop or at least avoid adding delays in that loop okay so if you don't want to write anything in loop but in our case we need to send the sensors value continuously to the client okay so we need to add something in the loop so for that this timer or ticker function will be useful okay so we won't be writing anything in this loop rather we'll be assigning one timer function which will be called after every uh, interval which will be defined by us okay so as we have declared this timer object now we'll utilize this timer object here by writing as timer dot attach okay after that we have to write the uh, time in seconds and we have to define which function we need to call after every second okay so here i have written as 0.5 which i will change to maybe two seconds so every two second send sensor function will be called okay now what is inside the send sensor function let's have a look so here's the send sensor function first of all i'm reading the humidity value reading the temperature value with the predefined functions of the dht library nothing crazy in it if there is no data received of the sensor is not connected it will just print as fail to read from dht sensor okay after that I am just formatting that raw data with JSON syntax, okay? So as you can see, we have to format the data in this particular format, like double inverted comma temp, colon, the actual temperature data, comma, double inverted comma HUM, colon, actual humidity data, semicolon, and double inverted commas. Uh, I think this is, no, I, we don't have to write double inverted comma, okay? So this is the format in which we need to send the census data. What I've created is, First of all, created one string called JSON data is equal to this temperature, then actual value T, then humidity, then actual value H, and just close that curly braces, okay? So with this much line of code, we are able to get this uh, string formatted with JSON. Then we have to send this data to the client, okay? For that, we'll be using this function called websocket.broadcast.txt. Dot broadcast txt will broadcast the message to all the clients connected to that server okay if there are multiple clients connected it will send the data to all the clients at the same time okay so inside that i have just written as json underscore data so this much line of code will broadcast the json formatted data to the clients so this is all about the programming of this fifth episode in which we will be able to send the census value to that server so let's just uh, connect my esp32 board and let's upload this code and see this project in action so I'll select the right board and port and hit the upload button. So till the code gets uploaded, uh, make sure you like this video if you are learning something new or if you are finding this video interesting, okay? Do like the video because by liking the video, the YouTube algorithm will come to know that this video is good and worth watching. Hence, it will try to promote this video with other viewers as well, okay? So make sure you like this video. Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded. Let us open the serial monitor and let me just reset this board. Okay, so MDN responder started. Let me just open the web browser. Make sure you are connected with the web server created by your ESP board. Okay, cool. So uh, in the new tab, I will open uh, esp.local. Let's just minimize this. Okay, great. So as you can see, I'm getting the temperature value as 25.5 and the humidity value as 44, which is uh, represented with the meter tag as well, okay? So here in the uh, serial monitor, you can see the same data is received here. Now if I open the console, you can see that same data on the console as well okay so here is the same data and uh, and, and simultaneously you can also control the leds connected to that uh, esp board without any you know a problem okay so everything is real time everything is like really very fast real time we are getting the census data we are able to send the data to the server and client and yeah everything is connected and everything is sending the data to each other at the same time so this is the beauty of websocket server programming okay 
so yeah this is it about our whole series so we are able to control the appliances we are able to uh, you know monitor the sensors data so here for the demo purpose i have just used two leds and two sensors data but you can attach multiple sensors data you can attach multiple appliances and create your own home automation system from scratch so yeah this was aim of our series now one thing which i need to discuss is this particular code with the dht sensor won't work with node mcu I really don't know why, but when I upload the code, I'm getting the error, the ESP, the node MCU board is constantly getting resetted with the DHT sensor. But when I attach any other sensor, just like the proximity sensor, the code was working with the node MCU board as well. Let me just show you the demo. So here's the code which I have modified for node MCU board just to make it compatible with the proximity sensor attached to it. So I just changed the HTML code as well as the actual server code as well, okay? So let me just select the right board and port and hit the upload button. Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded. Let's just open the serial monitor. And let me just reset this board. Let me open the web browser. Make sure your computer is connected with the access point created by ASP board. Okay, let us open that uh, web page. Cool, as you can see here is one web page with two LED buttons and only one meter tag on it because I modified this code just for proximity sensor to be connected with the node MCU board, okay? So currently it is showing one on the meter and on the serial monitor as well. But as soon as I bring my hand close to the sensor, as you can see the value goes to zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, okay? So that means uh, this code is also working perfectly with the node MCU board, but uh, there is something problem with the DHT sensor connected with the node MCU board. It was not at all able to read the sensor's data. I don't know why, what's the error, but uh, if you try it out and if uh, that uh, sensor's example works perfectly with the node MCU board as well, do let me know in the comments because it will not only help me, but it will also help a lot other community members as well if they are they want to make the same project using the node MCU board. So yeah, I think this was all about this complete series because this is all which I wanted to share with all of you guys. Okay, so I completely share my knowledge of this web sockets, JavaScript, JSON and everything. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you got to know so many things during this journey, during this series. Now, if you love my work and if you want to support me in any manner, then go on to patreon.com slash techiesms and, and well, you may get some benefits of supporting me. So yeah, ending this video here. Now, just wait for my next video. Then explore, learn, share with me, take SMS.